now that it's fully assembled, I wanted to do a comparison video between the Ashford QB2 and the Ashford QB3, as well as my Ashford Traditional, which will be moving on to a new home soon, so I want to make sure I get this video done before I do that. So, on the left, we have the Ashford QB3, and I'm just going to show you a few differences real quick. So, biggest difference that I've noticed is that it has these... Um, I'm going to call them pawls on the side so that you can fold up let me loosen they're a little hard for me to loosen still because they're still very new oh come on okay well there we go and then you're able to fold up the treadle for easier storage this is great if you have less space the Ashford QB2 did not do that. Um, the wheel is made, I believe, of a different material. And as you can see, it has more ridges to it. And it has one more ratio here. The, um, the original flyer for the Ashford QB2 just has the two. This one has three. And um, you'll also notice that I broke my Ashford QB2, which is part of why I upgraded to the super flyer. But just a small part of it. So, beyond that, um, this part is different, different knob. It comes with a orifice hook. It has a place to sit. It has a hole for the um, Allen wrench to sit because you need that for tightening up fairly often, or at least I do for the Ashford QB2, I need to tighten parts pretty often, so I assume I will for the Ashford QB3 as well. Now, now that it's upgraded, my Ashford QB2 has the super flyer attachment. So instead of just a four ounce bobbin, it has more like a pound, I believe, which will be great for plying. So I'm going to do most of my standard spinning on the Ashford QB3, and then my plying on the Ashford QB2 with the super flyer. Um, I'm still gonna have to spend some time getting used to that. I also need to find my notes for what color the Ashford QB2 was stained with so I can eventually get the super flyer to match. <laughs> um, I didn't originally... I'm not the one that stained the Ashford QB2. I had bought it secondhand. It was already put together and already stained. So putting together the Ashford QB3 was my first time putting a wheel together. Um, that said, I did find a oil that matched it at one point, and I've conditioned the wood with that multiple times, so I just need to find that again, and then I can stain the super flyer the same color. Alright, so, overall, they're not super different. Um, most of the differences between the Ashford QB2 and the Ashford QB3 is just little things things that help with basic quality of life stuff like it's really nice to be able to fold up the treadle so that it doesn't take up as much of a footprint in my house if I need it to be smaller it's nice to have one more ratio even if I'm not necessarily going to use it that often because it's good to have options uh, most of the other stuff is about the same all my favorite features of the QB2 are still there it still has the built-in lazy Kate it still has the super easy to put together parts. Um, the sliding hooks on the sliding hook flyer are different. I might swap back to my old ones. On the other hand, they probably just need to be used and then they'll loosen up with usage most likely. So I am going to swap these over and move the Ashford traditional over and then we'll talk about that. for traditional is a much more traditional looking wheel obviously it looks kind of like the one that would be in Sleeping Beauty in the Disney edition <laughs> just without the uh, the distaff which side note she pricked her finger on a distaff not on the spinning wheel so that's not even accurate anyway, that's not the point uh, <laughs> this wheel is pretty old um, when I was looking at pictures online to try to narrow down how old it was I narrowed it down to, I believe, the 1970s models of the Ashford Traditional. They've been making them a very long time. 
Now this wheel was given to me by a friend when she was no longer able to spin. And I have done my best and I have gotten it working. I can spin on it. However, it doesn't agree with my spinning style specifically. So we're gonna talk about that and why I'm going to be sending it on to its next owner. So first off, when it first arrived, it came with this flyer here. And that takes a much smaller bobbin size like these. So the first thing I did was I paid for the hookless flyer attachment so that it could use the same size bobbins as the Ashrood Kiwi 2, which I had already had. The Ashrood Kiwi 2 is my first wheel. Um, so it can take the same size bobbin now as the other ones. And it has, I believe, four ratios, which is actually one more than the standard Ashford Kiwi 3. Now, all the parts are basically the same. The brake attaches here, the drive band attaches here, the brake band goes back around over the bobbin, tighten it there, tighten the drive band with this knob here, one treadle. Now, the issue I had mostly, when it first arrived, it did have some parts I had to repair. So my first move was there's like a leather part in the back, right about here. So I had to replace the leather part, which was not super difficult. After that, the next thing I had to do was uh, wipe down all the wood, re-wax it, and then re-oil all of the metal joints. And then after that, I was able to spin with it. However, there are two reasons it was not a comfortable spin for me. Now the first is that it is a single treadle and the way it is oriented it's very hard to treadle with my left leg so that puts all the pressure on my right leg. Now my right leg is the one I broke uh, back in 2018 so it has quite a lot of metal in it. <laughs> and doing all of my treadling with my right leg is extremely exhausting. So that was not great. The other issue is that I am just slightly too tall. So when I'm treadling, my knee hits against the bar constantly, which is not very comfortable either. So my younger sister is a little shorter than me and she doesn't have the same issues I do. So she's going to be taking this wheel off my hands um, and I'm always happy to <laughs> help a new spinner get started, so I'm hoping that she really takes to it. She does like spindle spinning, so we'll see how this goes. In the meantime, I'm, I've done some more maintenance on it, and I'm going to give it one last wax before I send it off to her so it's nice and shiny for her. Um, but there isn't anything wrong with this type of wheel. And if I had a different chair, my knee might not hit it. The bigger issue is the my right leg is not very useful issue. <laughs> With a double treadle, it's half as much pressure on each leg, so I'm able to do that better. So that's about it. Um, I will say if you've never used a spinning wheel before, you should probably try at least sitting down at different types if you can. That said, the Ashford Kiwi 2 and Kiwi 3, I think that style is called a castle style, if I remember right. And that tends to be more open around it, so you're less, if you're a little taller, you're less likely to hit your knees against anything while you're spinning. While the Ashford traditional, oh, what is that style called? Is it Saxony? I'm gonna have to look it up. But this style of wheel does tend to have like a framework around the treadle. So if you're a little taller, you might have a harder time fitting at the wheel to spin. It's, it might hit against your leg more. So I think that's about it. I'm going to take some beauty shots of all three wheels and we'll call this good.